On. Let's get this going. Okay, first up. It's a new product dance. <laughs> yeah, do, what, do, do, this? Do, do. this is the ALS PT19. Um, I wish I'd tell you about it, but since I'm not the designer, I'm just a preface. I don't know. <laughs> no, okay. Um, this is a, it's just actually a very simple breakout. It almost kind of doesn't make tons of sense. It's like, well, why is it just like a photo? If it's like a, a photo transistor and a pull up resistor, or a pull down resistor, um, since CDS photo cells, have been, um, they, they're out of the, the Rojas exemption. Um, we're looking for more um, sensors that are, can basically act like photo cells or, or photo, photo sensors, light sensors that are very low cost and are very similar to um, how photo cells work. And so this is one of the chips that we think is, is a good alternative. Um, and it is Rojas compliant. So it's it basically just a photo transistor, uh, light shines on it. It does have a little filtering on it, so it, it it, it doesn't get affected by IR LEDs. It's it's close to a human uh, light response curve. Mm. Um, it's just a very basic light sensor. We're going to be using a bunch of products in the future that need light sensing. Okay. Um, but I thought I'd make a breakout for people who are just interested in, in trying this out. Okay. Just very small. Works All from right. like three to five volts. Okay, next up. Everybody asked for this forever, and now we have it. Resistors. Yeah, we, we don't have any more Pi Zeros in stock, but we do have tons of resistors. Resistors, um, resistors, resistors. You can go and get resistors from DigiKey and Mauser, and if you want a lot and you want 1%, you want different values, you want different sizes, and different wattages, and you don't, whatever, you, can, you want metal film, not carbon, you can go there. Um, the reason we're doing this is that we had a lot of schools and um, hacker spaces and workshop groups that were like, oh, we want to basically get a bunch of parts from you um, to do a, a project pack, but you don't carry any resistors. And um, we just want to make it very easy for them to be able to say like, oh, toss in some 10K resistors or some 4.7K resistors or something. Also handy for people who really just want a couple resistors. There's a three sets a piece. Um, we sell them in a pack of 25. Um, for 75 cents, but you're pretty much good to go. They're just your general purpose breadboard friendly resistors. And we'll add more values, but I wanted to start with what I thought was kind of the most popularly used set. So we got like the yeah. uh, 220 ohm, 470 ohm, uh, 1K, um, 2.2K, 4.7K, um, 10K, 2, 22K, 47K, 100K. So we'll add more, but that's kind of like, I want to start with these. These are okay. what we use in our projects. Exactly. Resistors. Uh, this is an adapter cable, and we probably should have carried this years ago, but we have it now. Um, and I will show this on the overhead. You can also just um, go forward to the next slide. This mm -hmm. adapts something that has a 3.5 millimeter outer diameter, 1.3 mil millimeter inner diameter DC plug to the more standard 5.5 slash 2.1 millimeter. And um, normally you don't bump into these, but um, all the solar panels from Voltaic have this smaller connector. And um, that's cool. We're down with that. But you may want to use it with our solar charger. So... Oh. Yeah. I'm going to oh. add a thing here. Too. That's cool. Um, so basically you just plug in this onto the end of the cable and it gets turned into a DC. Oh, thank you. So, um, you know, these come with this very small DC jack. And if you try to plug this into the jack on the solar charger, like, it doesn't work, but there's no surface mount jacks for this connector. This is why we pick it. It's like if I, I guess I could have, but it's also, this is more standard. But you can plug this into here, and it's a nice tight fit, and then you plug this into here, and Bob's your uncle, now you have your solar panel, you don't have to splice anything or cut anything. It's lovely. Um, we finally found a place that has these for a good price. So that's what it is, it's just an adapter. Yeah. All right, let's keep moving along. We're getting there. Okay, <clears throat> there's more. Next up, this is kind of um, a, similar as an adapter, and it converts a 2.1 millimeter device to micro USB. And this is useful if you want to plug something that is normally powered from a USB cable and you want to power it from a battery pack or DC jack. Um, it's just very common, again, to get 2.1 millimeter connectors. I mean, in theory, you could try to put this solar panel, I mean, don't do this, but you could put the solar panel, connect to that adapter, connect to this, and plug into your Raspberry Pi. Uh, it would probably okay. blow up your Pi because the solar panel can get up to seven volts, uh, or it might work-ish for a while, um, kind of. Again, don't, don't suggest it, but mechanically it'll work. And um, yeah, it's pretty much, it's just a little adapter. We have a cable version, but we also wanted a little pluggy type. It's, it's a very, very handy, especially if you have like um, a, f a five volt adapter and you want to charge a phone 
or something with a built-in battery. Usually they use a micro USB connector because they're much slimmer than a DC jack. Okay, um, moving right along, we got more stuff. Uh, this is a, this is uh, one of the stars of the show, Whew. besides you. Mm -hmm. Pi Zero's here. This is the Pi Zero. Besides Micro Center, which is in-store purchases, we are the only ones. And let me just clear up something really fast here. Um, thousands of people have bought their $5 Pi Zero from Adafruit. Oh, yeah, we sold a lot. Yeah. so A lot of people wanted them, and a lot of people got there's them. There's other companies that you can't buy the Pi Zero alone. There's other companies that charge a bunch of money on top of shipping. Whatever we charge for shipping is shipping unless, unless it's $200 or more, and you're in the U.S., and we do Get free, free shipping. shipping. Yeah. And um, anyways, so um, one of the things, though, is we ran out of stock very fast. We would put more in. We'd run out of stock. Then we had packs that we made, and so some of those, of course, had a Pi Zero with all the stuff. So we're going to go over those, but um, just keep in mind, like, when someone purchases something for $5, if they're shipping with that, which is whatever the shipping is, it's exactly what we're charged. Yeah. Um, that's what it is. We can't... And we can't put it in an envelope. We, we have to wrap yeah, this in anti-stat, and we have to yeah. put it in a box. You don't want to get it, it's broken. So we have to do, we yeah. do have to box it. So So that's why it's we ship it yeah, in a box. And, and we one, can't toss an envelope, stop asking. And my <laughs> other favor um, for people out there, if you're on websites and someone says free, there should always be free shipping, um, you could do that, but companies who do that go out of business. And you should figure out a business or model. Or they're publicly that, held. Or they're publicly held <laughs> charities like Amazon, yeah. where it's going to be subsidized <laughs> in some way forever until it's not, and then they're going to raise it, and then everyone's going to complain. But anyways, um, when you see someone say, you know, all shipping should be free or shipping's a ripoff, well, you know, if you subsidize shipping, eventually you, you go out of business. So we're not China that subsidized outbound as part of their economic strategy. We're not. Like, it's just not possible. And so um, when you see that, maybe tell people, like, there is fuel costs, there's people costs, there's packaging costs, there's all those things that go in with shipping a package. Yeah. So that's my favorite ask of everybody. If you it's see true. it, if you see it, like... By the way, we make no money on shipping. We do not make... Uh, we, yeah. We, we actually fact, zero it out. We yeah. actually did the math to zero it out. We so make no money we built shipping. our own audit system so we can tell... Um, so when you ship something, just a fun little side note, when yeah. you ship something via UPS, if there's fuel surcharges or adjust changes, it's up to like 10 bucks or so. 25, are you kidding? Yeah, $25. and so what we do is we do an audit each cycle to make sure that we're always charging the exact amount and we're doing all those corrections all mm -hmm. along. And there's companies that do that for you, but they charge hundreds of thousands of dollars. We built our own. Yeah. So um, anyways. That's cool. Anyways, um, it's Yeah, we crunched all the numbers and to, to yeah. calculate. Because like sometimes we undercharge or overcharge, but we, we yeah. but very, very rarely. But right now, but we now right audit it. Audit it so we can figure out like, oh, did we yeah. not do dimensional shipping or something? Anyways, we can yeah. talk about shipping forever. Okay. Let's talk about this Pi Zero. Yeah. So, Lady Ada, what are the big features? You want to put it on the overhead? What yeah. are the big features of the Pi Zero? Okay, so I'm actually gonna um, um, gonna have a Pi Zero with the header and the case on it because that's yeah. what I've got. Okay. Um, I'm gonna zoom in. Can you zoom in a little bit more for me? Yeah. Actually, I we, have one. We can we can do this. I'm gonna leave that there so you can zoom in. Like that. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna grab. I have one. Okay. I have a bare one here. Hold on. So this is the Pi Zero, and I, I wrote a pretty long guide and a sort of video about it, but I'll talk about it again. So the Pi Zero uses the same chip and memory as the Pi uh, B Plus and A Plus. It's the um, V6 ARM. The ARM V6 core, it runs at 700 megahertz. You can, it's overclocked to one gigahertz and it seems to be just fine. Um, it has 512 megas of 12 megabytes of RAM. There's a micro SD slot, so you can um, put in an SD card. Uh, you need at least a four gig card if you're running Raspbian Lite. An eight gig card is suggested because um, the new Jesse build is, is 4.5 gig, so you do need to have more than a five gig card. Um, what's different about it compared to the Raspberry Pi B Plus and A Plus is, of course, it's smaller. Like the Raspberry Pi A Plus is like this big, and then the B Plus has Ethernet ports and um, a USB, USB ports and Ethernet port. This doesn't have that. This doesn't have Ethernet. It doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi. It does have USB, but instead of having a USB A port, it has this sort of on-the-go port. That's what. It's not actually technically on the go, which is a, which is a standard. Um, but hold on, let me just get the adapter from my bin. Sorry, one second. Okay, I can't find my. Oh, it's at the bottom. 
Okay, found it. Um, instead of having a USB port, um, to keep it small and low cost, there's a micro USB port, and then use an on-the-go adapter, and now you've got your standard USB port. And likewise, um, to make the HDMI port small enough so they could make this board like gumstick size, um, HDMI plug is also mini. So you can get a mini HDMI cable, but um, we also have these handy little adapters that are HDMI standard to mini HDMI, so you can see the, the difference in size. Like it looks like a standard HDMI, but it's actually like much, much thinner and smaller than standard. So if you don't need HDMI, then you know you don't plug it in. But if you do, then that's how you get video and audio out. You can get digital audio out that as well. Um, there's also NTSC TV, NTSC or PAL TV available. You have to solder onto it. Um, those pads that say um, TV out. And that's kind of it. It's very basic. It's a single-sided board, which is kind of neat. And they don't solder in the headers. So, you know, that's kind of like, it could be a pro, it could be a con. Um, if you want it to plug in hats, and it will work with any Pi hats, um, you need to solder in a header like this. So this is a 2 by 20 male header, and, and we introduced these in the, in the show last week, and we're like, we just have these headers, I don't know why. They're just in the store, and it's just like, because in two hours we're releasing the Pi Zero. So if you solder this in, now you can plug in any kind of hat or Pi TFT or, or connect to the GPIO. However, what we kind of like is that you don't have to solder in this header. You can actually kind of get a little creative. Like, for example, you can solder in a right angle female socket header like this, and then you can plug it into a um, pie cobbler like this, and you kind of have this sort of neat, like, all-in-one computer that's plugged into your breadboard, and you get all the GPIO, and so you can, you can basically do... Um, a project using a full computer like on your breadboard. So I thought that was kind of neat. And, it, and it's not a big deal to solder in the 2 by 20 header and desoldering it is really annoying. So for people who want to do wearable projects or like portable projects, um, the power draw is not that high because it doesn't have that USB port or Ethernet port. And some people did some math and you can basically get it down to like 100 or so milliamps of current. I think with HDMI it's about 300 total. Um, and, and yeah, it's basically a small, lightweight Raspberry Pi. Zero, I think for zero, because it's minimal. I mean, this is like the fixie of, of Raspberry Pi computers. Oh. If you took away anything, it wouldn't work anymore. It's the fixie of Raspberry Pi computers. That's cool. Yeah. We'll get that on the t shirt or something. Okay. Well, you always say that, so I, mean, I stole that yeah. from you. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's so, the Pi Zero. So, and check out the guide because yeah. I have a ton more. So let's, About um, it there. we're running a little late, so okay, sorry, let's, we're let's quickly, um, Whoa, the time went. yeah, so we have some starter packs when they're in stock that have everything you need if this is like one of your first Raspberry Pis, or if you just want to have everything just ready to go out of the box. So, um, you know, comes with a bunch of stuff, adapter cables, cobblers, headers, you want it, You've got it. Yeah, it's cool. It's here. And then, um, we also have a budget pack. Yep, this is kind of the minimal pack. Um, we wanted to make sure that people had the option of getting a, a pack with kind of like really the minimal amount of stuff. Like you need yeah. to have a good power supply, an eight gig card, um, two options for header, and then those, those cable adapters. So um, we will be getting more Pi Zeros in and sign up and we will notify people. Please note they go very, very fast. As yeah. in, like, we'll put in a couple hundred. Like, we had to slow it down no, because it's we like couldn't ship. No, it's like tossing cotton candy into a volcano. It just poof. It just they go away instantly. Yeah, we, we actually couldn't put in all of the pies zeros we got because the yeah. shipping department wouldn't be able to handle that many yeah. orders. So we were putting in a couple hundred at a time every few hours, and they would be just gone in like two minutes. So okay. sign up, but be ready, yeah, and we'll keep, get more. Let's keep going. We're so moving. Uh, next up, we got a case. We have the case. I showed that off. It's it's a lovely little acrylic protector. Yeah. Um, you put on your pie, and it just protects your pie while leaving all the ports available. It's very cute. All right, so let's go through this. And we made sure it works with our accessories that we have. It's super cute. Designed by super Phil B. Fun. Paint your dragon. By Phil B. And there it is with the cobbler. Yep. Okay. That's it. Next up, um, we have the feather doubler. Mm -hmm. Double feather. Double feather. Um, so this is a very handy little thing for people who are using the feather boards. Um, so this is compatible with all feathers and all of the feather wings. So for example, here's a preview of a, a NeoPixel feather wing that may or may not be coming out, as I don't ask. 
um, and you can plug in, you have a, you have a prototyping area with it, but you can also plug in, um, without using stacking headers, you can plug in you know, oh, a, a wing I, I skip ahead? and a header. Yeah, I'm just going oh, to yeah. get it overhead. Just go to the overhead, yeah, it's fine. Um, you just put it together and then you know you can use stacking headers as well, but you get a full prototyping area and you can um, plug this in like so. And then you can um, plug and play different add-ons and of course you still get that prototyping area. And then if you used um, stacking headers, you can have, oh, sorry, if you use stacking headers, you can um, add more feather wings on top or you can stack under as well. But I thought this is kind of a nice way to just sort of add capabilities and it's still not that large. Okay. So cute. So All it comes right. as a little kit. Next up, um, I'm excited about this. Yep. This is the Wi-Fi 101, finally. From, from Arduino.cc. Arduino.cc. Yes. This is the real deal. The new Wi-Fi 101 Shield uses the at Wink 1500 um, SSL capable uh, Wi-Fi chip. This is actually a very nice chip. I, I played with it quite a bit. It's very stable, much more stable than the CC3000. It supports the client interface. Um, it's very easy to code. It's very fairly priced. And again, it, it supports SSL. And so if you're trying to connect to, it has its own storage for certificates inside of it okay. that are, are uploaded to, um, to it already. So you basically have the capability of connecting to secure sites. Okay, and last up tonight, the star of the show besides you, besides Pi Zero, besides the Arduino Wi-Fi Shield 101 is, you guessed it, Feather another, M0. Another feather. It's We're the Feather to M0. Do a feather a week, and this week's feather is the Feather M0 Basic. So we already have the Feather 32U4 Basic, and we have the Feather Huzzah. This one uses the new um, ATSAM 21D G18 chip from Atmountains. This is also the chip featured in the Arduino Zero, and so it has support in the Arduino IDE, but it's a really awesome chip. It's a Cortex M0 processor. It runs at 48 megahertz, it's 32-bit um, width, uh, address width. Um, it's got like 256K of flash and like, like, like 32K of RAM. Uh, it's got all these GPIO, it has a DAC pin on it. It's got tons of ADCs, PWMs. It's basically like super fast, has tons of memory, um, and is not that much more expensive than the 32U4. It's kind of about the same price, and so we're really excited to offer the Feather, which is our, again, standard layout for all the pins that you'd want to use with this chip. Um, we put this chip uh, the, in the middle there. It comes with a real-time clock crystal, a 32 kilohertz crystal for low, um, low uh, clock rate, low power usage, and you can adjust the clock dynamically on the fly, which is kind of neat. And think about the Cortex-M0 pluses. Okay. Uh, it has a reset switch, it has a built-in battery charging, LiPo charging, so you basically plug it into a micro USB, you can charge the battery and reprogram and, and do USB serial with the chip. It has the USB serial capability built in. So it's, it's a really nice upgrade to the 32U4. If you like the 32U4, you're going to really, really like this chip. It has even more of everything you love. Okay. And that, Lady Ada, is your products. Congratulations. You did it. You got through it. I did it. You did it. Yay. That's new products. Okay. <laughs>